October is here with the new 40,000 gem giveaway. Five lucky winners will each win 8,000 gems. Any platform can win. Enter in the description down below. Hello, everybody. We are here with your Ratatasker guy. We will be playing Ratatasker over in the jungle. So we're grabbing tier one Assassin's Blessing. Getting ourselves our acorn going up to this right hand side. We'll talk about these acorns in a bit getting our hand of the gods and of course a blink so for me there is one acorn above all the rest that is by far superior so we are going to be talking about that but there's also going to be a bunch of other acorns for if you're playing other roles or looking to do different things but i do believe that there is simply one that's the best yeah. we're going to be starting off with our third ability yeah. And this is also going to be the ability that we're maxing out first. This is Acorn Blast. This is going to be a, a cone in front of you. And if you hit three of your acorns, there is three of them in the regular version, it is going to be a stun. Enemies hit by multiple acorns, though, do take a little bit less damage from each progressive acorn. But it does do uh, more damage when you hit more acorns. And it does a lot of damage. We're going to get our Ratatasker auto attack started right up there. I got my auto attack started up before the buff spawned because Ratatasker does have an auto attack chain. So his auto attack chain is 1.5.5, 1.25, and that is for damage and swing time. And on your fourth auto attack, it is an AoE auto. So if you try to start off with your fourth auto attack on the jungle camp, not only will it hit harder, it'll also be AoE. So it hits all of the camp. Just to help you clear a little bit faster. At level two, we are going to get our one. This is going to be the ability uh, that we typically max out last. This is our movement ability on Ratatasker. It will dash through minions. It will not dash through gods. If you hit an enemy god, it will go ahead and stop you uh, right when you hit them. Okay. It does damage to all the minions you pass, pass through and the enemy god that you hit. And it will slow the enemy god. On top of this, Dart's cooldown is reduced by one for each enemy hit by Flurry or Acorn Blast. So if you're hitting um, some enemy gods with those abilities, you're actually going to lower your dash cooldown. So if you watch it, you can actually see the cooldown get just a little bit lower on that ability. So it just helps your movement ability come up a little bit quicker, get you more involved in the fights a little bit faster, or to help you get away as well. At level three, we grab our two. This is a really interesting ability. It is a, uh, you spin around you. It'll proc four times doing damage in the area around you. Not only is it gonna do damage in that area around you, it is also a protection shred. Uh, so this is gonna take away physical protection and this will proc up to four times. So right now it can be up to eight protections. At the end, it's up to 24 protections. So typically, you actually want to use this before you really start attacking somebody a lot because that way you get the protection shred, right? But it's also kind of a great ability for chasing people down that are just slightly out of your range um, because it's this little circle, meaning that if you're just outside of melee range, you can oftentimes use this to grab the kill right when they're out of range. And so you'll find that the two ways that you're using this ability is one, to either bring down their protections at the very start of a fight, so you're maximizing your damage, or two, to just get them, because they were going to get away with, like, one HP. Now we need to talk about our ultimate. Our ultimate is going to be a semi-global ability. That semi-global ability allows us to jump across the map. We're going to use it right now as a getaway skill. I'm going to go one and a two and a three, and I'm going to go really far away. You can buy Ratatasker's acorn when you are not in the base. You do not have to be in the base in order to buy Ratatasker Acorn. No, this does not go for the rest of Ratatasker's um, things that you buy. 
I didn't even really need to buy it right there because I was going to back anyway, but I just wanted to show you. You can buy your acorn at any time at any place on the map. It's just a part of your passive. So specifically back over now to our ultimate. You can jump up to three times in your ultimate. You saw that I did one branch jump, a second branch jump, and then the land down. So you can use this to travel very far, very quickly. Um, you can manually cancel this ability to fall down to the floor before you do all three jumps. So if you would simply like to go up into the air and come right back down, that is fine. Just instead of left clicking, you are going to right click and you'll smash right back down. When you do land on an enemy, this is gonna do a bunch of damage in a circle where you land. And it is also going uh, to knock up everybody within that area. You are CC immune while you are channeling in your ultimate, but uh, it's not for a super long build up time. But do be aware, it is about half a second to a second where you have to actually channel this ability before you fly into the air. Now, finally, we can get into our passive, which is our acorn on Ratatasker. So Acorn has access, uh, Acorn, Ratatasker has access to Acorns, which are special items that only he can buy. These Acorns, like we talked about anywhere, like we talked about earlier, uh, can be bought from anywhere on the map, and they are the replaced item for his boot. So you don't buy boots on Ratatasker, you get Acorn instead, and when you upgrade the Acorn, it provides different bonuses for him. Those different bonuses are as follows. We have four acorns. We got to go to all of our acorns. On the left-hand side, uh, you have what are basically the tanky acorns. And on the right-hand side, you have the uh, more aggressive acorns. So if you're playing Ratatasker in the jungle, you're really only choosing between two uh, acorns. You're choosing between the thistle horn acorn, commonly referred to as Christmas corn. This is my preferred acorn, and what this is going to do is it is going to give us nice 45 power, 20% movement speed, and then the passive acorn blast, which is our third ability, is going to get real beefy. So instead of being three acorns, you're going to have five acorns, and enemies that get hit by this ability take 5% additional damage from Ratatasker's ability, stacking up to three times. So that is up to potentially 15% bonus damage. Yeah. That is a lot of damage. You're right. Got to back up really quick. Get myself going into a brawler. As you can see how much healing that they have right here. They've got a raw. They've got a Sylvanas. They've got some self-sustain with the Achilles on his two, the Hachi on his belt. So we're going to back up and start moving ourselves into a brawler's bee stick. The other aggressive acorn, the one that you probably see people pick up the most, is the crit corn. Crit corn over here is your bristle bush acorn this is going to make your dash ability that is your one it's going to make it crit as well as give you crit chance in general 35 power 20 movement speed 20 percent crit chance when dart damages an enemy rad tasker gains 10 percent physical life seal 10 percent basic attack damage for six seconds so this is going to let your first ability this dash it will crit potentially not every time but it will give it the ability to crit and you will start to build into a critical Ratatasker. This used to be the best acorn back in the day. I do not believe it is so. Uh, you will find that if you land your acorn stun, it is a disgusting amount of damage. So I truly recommend getting that furthest right acorn when you're jungling. Let's get a little, let's get a nice little whiff. Fun fact, your abilities don't do any damage if you don't land them. Just a fun little smite fact for you while we're doing a guide. Incon's got to show you what's up. Then on the left-hand side, we have those two defensive acorns. Before we get defensive acorn, I'm going to jump one time. I'm going to sit into the air and kind of make these guys worried. I'm going to jump a second time. I'm still waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for an opportunity. Boom! I'm going to try to land right down on these guys. We're going to kill the raw. Hachi's going to go down. So right there, I used my... I used my uh, ultimate as kind of a zoning technique. I was making them afraid by staying in the air a little bit longer. 
waiting for them to misposition themselves. Then I landed right on down on top of the rock, instantly followed up with my three for a bunch of damage. And then as we talked about earlier, I used my two in order to get the kill on Daji. She was slightly outside of my auto range, but she wasn't outside of my two damage range. Now let's go back over to our acorns on the left hand side. Our two tanky acorns are basically the green Healy Boy acorn. When you deal damage to an enemy god, you restore 7% of your maximum health and mana. So this is a pretty common pickup for Ratataskers that are building uh, in the solo lane or even in the support. Uh, and that is also going to give you extra HP right off the top. So you can see you get 10% maximum health. The last acorn, which is probably the least picked up acorn, uh, the least good of all of them, that is going to be your thick bark acorn. It's got a nice name though. You can walk around and be like, I got some thick bark. But what it is going to do is it's gonna give you 10% total protection instead of HP as well as movement speeds power. And then this passive is going to let you Wow, hi, Dodgy. Rude. Don't be rude. Look at that giant nuke. That's right, baby. Dodge. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Get hit by the last chain. Son of a gun. I actually might need to go half out in this fight, so we'll go back to the acorn in just a moment. Gonna try to get myself over here, go for a little double stun. I'm gonna hit Sylvanas and the Achilles with that, but now I'm a little bit afraid that they want to try to go aggressive on me, so I'm gonna try to back out of this. On top of that, you are going to be able to use your second ability twice with the Thick Bark Acorn. When Rantasker deals damage with an ability, he restores 3% of his maximum health, and Flurry now provides protections equal to the protection shred. So when you shred protections from your enemy, you will gain protections as well. Right now, in the normal form, you do not. And you will gain an additional charge on your Flurry. Basically, think of it like Pele 1, how Pele 1 can have two charges. Same concept, but with your two, which is that of circular ability. For all intents and purposes, though, on Rattatasker, if you're jungling, I would grab that furthest right acorn. That's going to give you this amazing stun on your three, some amazing damage. If you're going tanky, I would go for the health acorn just in general. Going to use my ultimate to make me travel real far to get in range of Sylvanas, land on him, and grab ourselves a kill. So back to our ability leveling order because we grabbed this thistle uh acorn we leveled our three first because that is our main damaging ability this is the ability that we're augmenting we're grabbing our ultimate whenever we can then our two and then our one so the official level order is four three two and one the reason why we level it in that order our ultimate gets reduced cooldown as we put points into it so that gives us more ability to travel across the map our three is our main damaging ability with this acorn our two is giving us that protection shred as well as aoe damage around us and our one is our movement ability and so we don't want to have to use it aggressively uh if we don't necessarily have to um, and because we did not go into the crit acorn, which relies on you to use that ability aggressively, it allows us to just be a little bit safer. For our build, we started off with that big fat power acorn. We've got our assassin's blessing as per usual. And then we went into the brawler's beat stick for the anti-heal. Now that I don't have to worry about getting some more anti-heal, I'm gonna bring myself into a heart seeker. This uh, is a pretty ability based uh, jungle Ratatasker build, as you should be, uh, with this particular acorn. So we're going to be looking for damage on our damage on our damage with this build. I'm going to look for maybe a blink back there on the raw with a stun. We're going to hit him with the blink stun. Then I'm going to start walking at this Sylvanas. Not going to quite use my dash yet. I'm a little bit scared. Now I'm going to use it to slow him back down. Try to get as much damage off on him as I can. And then start to back away looking for their jungle. My ultimate is up. So I feel confident that I can get a little bit greedy here. And even if they come for me, I can probably just ultimate out of this situation. So our fourth item is going to be the heart seeker. It's going to give us a little bit of percent pen, uh, which is going to be nice because they are going to be running a, a medium tanky comp. You can see they're going to have a Sylvanas and an Achilles building tanky. The rest of them probably going to be... Uh, more squishy but we do have flat pen from our brawlers beat stick as well to help us out a little bit with those squishy folks
for our matchups on Ratatasker. Ratatasker, for all intents and purposes, is basically Thor. They actually have very similar kits. They both got stuns, they both got semi-global ults, they both got a lot of burst ability type damage, and you get some extra damage by utilizing your auto attacks in between. So if you know how to play Thor, chances are you basically know how to play Ratatasker. I'm gonna hop right over here by this dodgy. I'm trying to wait for her to come out of her ulti before I look towards him, and we're gonna be able to put him down right after that gonna back up now get my heart seeker and a sentry ward so for your matchups on ratatasker you are looking to pick rat when you want to be on the prowl for ganks ratatasker is a big fat ganker i know we talk about uh in the jungle farming 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 and of course farming is important but on the semi-global junglers ganking becomes extremely important in order to utilize that ultimate properly and help get people behind because you've got this ulti that lets you travel from afar you're going to be able to avoid the common award locations a lot easier than other gods so where somebody like a nemesis can't necessarily get around those wards because she's got to walk right through them you on ratatasker can actually tend to hop right around and over them and get the gank off before the vision would even matter so you should be trying to focus pretty hard on ganking when you're on these types of characters oh my god you can just see that big burst damage from the three it is disgusting <laughs> It also, fun fact, makes the stun easier to hit um, because you gain an additional two acorns. It goes from a three acorn ability to a five acorn ability. Uh, you only have to hit three for the stun. So it genuinely becomes an easier ability to hit the stun on as well. Just a fun little fact for you on that acorn. So you're looking to pick Rattle Tasker into comms that you want to put behind certain gods. So do they have a hyper carry in the duo lane? Somebody like an Oleron who maybe can't get away from your ganks super easy without using like a long cooldown like his ulti? Great time to pick Ratatasker. They're running an immobile mage. Like, I don't know, one of the best mages in the game right now. Raw in the mid lane. He may be really fast, but it doesn't matter how fast you are if you're knocked up and then stunned, right? Great idea to pick Ratatasker into that as well. And of course, he does generally good against healers because you've got four abilities that can proc brawlers. So I went into an early brawlers. All of my stuff, my two is an AoE brawlers proc. Wonderful against healers. Even though he doesn't have built-in anti-heal in his kit, he still just has generically good abilities to proc the brawlers. So now I'm going to go back and we're going to get ourselves into an Erendite. Erendite's going to make us a little bit more annoying. Help us chase down targets after we ulti. That's so that way we can use our ulti to get in range of them. And then when we land from that ulti, we get that Erendite proc. That's going to give us that bonus movement speed after our ulti. As we're aggressing towards our opponents, we'll be able to hopefully stay in the range of all of our abilities and guarantee those kills. Particularly effective against gods like Ra that have some bonus movement speed in their kit. So it'll help you keep pace with them. I'm marking my territory. For gods that you don't want to go against on Ratatasker, uh, Ratatasker tends to not love going against people with cripples. Uh, when your ultimate is down on Ratatasker, your only real ability uh, to get in range of the opponent is going to be is going to be your uh, dash. So if you can't use your dash, you obviously can't get in range of your abilities. Also, reminder, your one gets lower cooldown for hitting people with your two and your three, meaning that Ratatasker's dash tends to be up more than other characters' dashes. So if you lose out on that part of your kit, you are missing out on a significant part of Ratatasker. So I would watch out for gods like Ares that can consistently apply cripples. Ardeo even, you don't see a lot of Ardeos nowadays, which just a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you probably should. She recently got her heal buffed, but that's neither here nor there for this guy. Just watch out generically for those cripples, preventing you from doing too much work. Outside of that, I would be a little bit concerned about ultra late game hyper carries. Uh, Ratatasker is definitely more of an early game ganking god. That means that a lot of his reliance uh, on the late game is just getting your team ahead so you can get your hyper carries ahead so I can start to rely on people like my Poseidon and my Cupid to be ahead and really um, 
get into the late game stages of the game before the enemy team where they're the most powerful. You won't drop off completely and be useless or anything. But if you're going against like a nemesis in the jungle, somebody that's just like a really late game hyper carry that comes online super hard and starts wrecking, you're not going to provide that same level of ultra late game to your team. So you really just want to make sure that you're utilizing a little bit of your earlier in mid game to help get your teammates with that ultra late game powerhouses, your ADCs, your mid laners of the world to that point. Gonna wait until that beads runs out to go for the dash. I did miss it, so I'm just gonna go right into the air, and I'm gonna land right back down immediately on top of both Sylvanas and Rock. Not gonna waste any time at all. I've got the bleeds on me right now, so I actually can't blink to try to get on this Rock. But now that Sylvanas is stunned over here with the Fafnir and everybody, we're gonna be able to get some easy kills. So, as is the natural extension of what we just talked about. When you're in your team fight on Ratatasker, your number one job is, of course, to try to burn down a squishy as fast as you can. So this game, my main targets are Ra, Hachi, and Daji. Preferably the Ra because he doesn't have a real movement ability. So he'll be my target above all else. So when I'm in these team fights, how I'm going to start off is I'm looking to either immediately initiate with my ultimate, right? I go right behind them, I land right on the raw, and I try to follow up with an immediate three stun and an auto attack. So when you're doing your abilities on Ratatasker, much like everybody else, make sure you're weaving in autos. So I land from my ultimate, I auto, I three, I auto, I two, I auto, I one, I auto. Make sure you're getting in those auto attack weaves because your autos on Ratatasker will be hitting these squishies for probably like 300 plus damage at the end of the game. If you're missing out on that damage, you're going to be missing on some serious damage potential. I see Hachi all the way over the left lane. So I'm actually going to get a little bit aggressive here. I'm going to start ulting from right here and try to make my way over to him. I'm going to land on top of this Daji, go for the stunt. She was in her two. Uh, which gives her immunity. I'm gonna pop my B just in case he tries to go this way so I don't get yoinked so I can try to catch him out. I see Ra coming over. I'm gonna try to body block him in the corner. Looks like we're gonna body block him just enough. One thing I should mention is that your three does actually go through walls on Ratatasker. Uh, people don't necessarily know this. Uh, while you're one and your two don't, you can actually stun people through walls with your three. Uh, so if you kind of watch this, it'll actually go through that wall. That is an all the time thing. Uh, without this special acorn bringing you the extra two uh, acorns at the end of your, your blast, it's not usually super important, but because we've got those extra acorns, it's actually very possible to get a stun through the wall uh, to start setting us up. So keep that in mind. You can't actually use this through your wall. Your one and your two, you can't do it with, uh, but you can use that three through the wall. Uh, so if I don't have my ultimate up to get me into a team fight, instead of using my ulti to get into the team fight, I will simply blink in, go for the immediate three, then the auto, then the two, and then hopefully the target is dead. If they're not after that, I can decide whether I want to use my dash aggressively to try to secure the kill, or if I want to use my dash to get out, and if I'm content with the amount of damage that I output onto the target. Remember, you don't have to 100% kill the target in order to take them out of the fight. Oftentimes, just getting people low, forcing them to back is plenty enough. I'm going for a quick fight right here. I'm going right for the dodgy. I'm going to hop one time, then I'm going to land. Not going to be able to grab the kill on the dodgy before she and Sylvanas can ulti. But that is three ultimates now down, down, down for your boy. I got to watch out for this Achilles. I'm keeping an eye on the minimap. I saw that he blinked, so I immediately blinked right there. So in that situation, I was actually not looking at my character whatsoever. All I was doing was watching the minimap because I can see and react to the minimap icon changing way faster than I can react uh, to anything happening around my character. So I literally just looked at the minimap. I thought the Achilles was probably going to come for me. Boop. Secured the fire giant through the wall with a little three. Attack middle lane. 
So we grabbed our Aerodite for a little bit of CDR. We got a Heart Seeker for the extra ability damage. We're grabbing Blood Forge for the extra aggression here at the end of this game. This is gonna let us continue to fight in these battles as we get those pickoffs. Force them to use even more ultimates on me. So I'm gonna head right down this mid lane, get ourselves a second wave push up. You pretty much always want two waves push up when you're going for a Phoenix. They do have one kill over there. They're being a little aggressive shoving for the Phoenix without me. It's not the end of the world though because we do have a pretty large lead here at the 24 minute marker. But they're gonna find that after they push that Phoenix, they're not able to go for the mid Phoenix because we don't actually have the tier two tower down yet. So they're gonna have to come reset, grab the tower, but I'm already here pushing it up. We're just gonna chill out. I'm gonna get some wards back here safe. Get a ward out on the left hand side. And we're just gonna wait around looking for a pickoff. I don't even mind looking at the Achilles. Just gonna throw down some damage on him through that wall. They've got all five people up. We wanna make sure we've got all five people here. We do now. I'm gonna grab this speed. Savannah's look for the pull. He missed. We're gonna wait for the next wave to come in. Gonna wait for that next wave to come in from mid, help push yeah. up these creeps in the right side. And then I'm gonna ulti over here from this right hand side. I'm actually gonna go even deeper into their base. Try to see if I can't force some folks away from that mid Phoenix. Force them all the way over here, and then I can just ulti all the way back to the mid Phoenix if I need to. No problemo. Just zoning them away from their Phoenix. We're using a lot of abilities towards the Titan room. We don't really need to be doing that. All we need to do is walk right up to this Titan now, and we can end the game. So remember, with those global ultis, to always be spreading the map. That's the whole point of that semi-global ult, is to make sure that you can spread people out. So I move people all the way over uh, to that right-hand side, so they come to gank me. All of a sudden, in the mid lane, bada bing, bada boom, they're just pushing that mid Phoenix for free now because they let too many people go so they can't defend it. I ulti, now I'm in the air, I'm safe, I cannot be killed. <laughs> so at the very end of that game, one thing that is unique about Ratatasker is you do not sell your acorn. So your acorn is like boots. Your acorn gives you 20% movement speed. Do not, I repeat, do not buy potion movement speed on Ratatasker you will lose movement speed. Potion movement speed overrides whatever boots you have. Your acorn is your boots. Your acorn gives you 20% movement speed. The potion will give you 18% movement speed and you will actually lose movement speed and a bunch of money on that deal. You don't sell your acorn, you keep it until the very end and you get an earlier 3K pot than other characters will get. So get your red pots, get your 3K pots, all that good stuff. Our final item we would have gotten is we would have sold our Assassin's Blessing. And then we would have either gotten another generic pen item if we needed some more penetration against this team. Uh, we always had uh, Jones Wrath opened up for all the CDR and pen. We had Crusher just for raw damage. Uh, we had a Titan's Bane if they were getting super tanky. And we had a Mantle of Discord uh, if we felt like we needed pure defense. Or the Sledge if we felt like we needed something hybrid all respectable items in that situation, guys. And that is our Ratatasker guide.